Okay, so uh, Medusa is um, strange media, uh, which is uh, based really far from here. It is Russian-speaking media. Um, uh, it is very popular in Russia right now, though it was founded like uh, one year and uh, eight months ago. Um, you can read it yourself, but uh, what is really important is that 70% uh, of our audience are under uh, 35. I think this number is really uh, it, this number is really good, but not because I'm an ageist or something. Don't think so. I think that uh, these young people who read Medusa they have really good opportunity to see Russia without uh, President Vladimir Putin, which is, I guess, good. Um, so. Where is basically uh, Medusa is um, um, is um, is living? It lives in the country that uh, named Latvia. Uh, famous American TV presenter has to help me uh, to explain it to you. Uh, it was the you know the TV show uh, about the visit of Barack Obama to the Baltic states. Do you know what are the Baltic states? The Baltic states, it is something between Scandinavia and Russia. So uh, there are three Baltic countries, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. Somebody thinks that there is uh, also a country named Activia, though Activia is just a yogurt. Um, so this is not the best map, however. I think it is really important. Um, I have to say something useful for you. So here we have the Baltic Sea. Here we have Latvia, here we have Activia, and here we have Mother Russia. Um, okay, this is us. We're sitting in, in Riga. Uh, Riga is the capital of Latvia. Um, actually, this story started not from the launching of Medusa. This story started a little bit earlier. It started from the Russian media, which was based in Moscow, which is, uh, I guess, uh, easier to understand. Um, the media, the name of this media is Lenta.ru. You know, I think you've never heard about it, but it was a massive Russian-speaking media. Um, in 2013, it was the fifth largest out news outlet in Europe. And uh, it had two million unique visitors per day. So it was a big, you know, everyday newspaper with department of sports, with department of culture, with department of this and that, of technologies, of everything. It had uh, 100 uh, people who worked as an editors and journalists. And it was the biggest independent media in Russia at that period. It was already strange that that's, that kind of media can actually exist. So it didn't last very long. In March 2014, the owner of Lentaru just before the Crimea uh, events, just before the war between Russia and Ukraine, he decided to fire the editor-in-chief of uh, Lentaru. And all these people who are on this picture, and I am among them, decided to quit after this um, editor-in-chief. So we left Lentaru. And um, it is important that there is no that big independent media in Russia anymore. So now the audience of Lentaru is twice, or maybe three times smaller. But anyway, uh, so we left Lentaru, and we decided, well, we had a very stupid idea. We decided to make new political and social media for Russians. Though, you know, after what's happened with us in Lenta and in that circumstances, this is probably a really stupid idea. Um, and there was another problem. I, I name this problem as a problem of the second album. Because when you're making something incredible, such as Lentaru, which was really massive, really big, huge, two million unique visitors per day, um, and you're leaving this project, well, probably your next project gonna be shitty. Because you're, gonna, you're, you're, you're going to record the second album. How many second albums, great second albums, do you know? If you're not talking about Beatles. Um, okay, so we started from the, you know, from the white, white uh, uh, list. Um, we decided 
that we need to make something completely different, not big, you know, massive uh, everyday newspaper. Um, we decided that we, want, we want it to be something extremely useful. It has to be very clear, um, very bright. It has to be very, you know, it has to be bigger. I mean, it has to be brighter than Lanteru, though it is almost impossible. And uh, we wanted to start as soon as we can, because when you have a team, and we had, you know, a part of a team from Lanteru, you have to move very quickly. So we, I think, some days after uh, firing of our editor-in-chief, we met to drink and to talk and to cry, and we decided to make this new media, and we've launched it uh, six months later. Um, what did we decide to do uh, when, we, when we decided to launch Medusa? Well, uh, first of all, we have small resources. We don't have much money. We have a team. Well, in the beginning, we had a team like 15 people. So, and you have a big, big Russian agenda and post-Soviet agenda and international agenda. So we decided to, you know, to fight against the white noise because there are too many news, but we're going to cover only the main news stories. And we're going to make a big, long read articles only about the main uh, stories on the, in this uh, specific region and uh, in the world. Um, the second point is really important because uh, we're living in, in, in our region, uh, I mean in Russia and in, in post-Soviet countries, we're living upon the um, information war. And information war, you know, the uh, Russian propaganda, but I, I don't want to, you know, to talk about it a lot because I don't like to talk about Russian propaganda, and probably you are not very interested in that. However, any propaganda uses the journalism of opinions to, you know, to provide the ideas. Uh, it's like you know, every journalist uh, has to have an opinion what's happening. If something happening with our mother Russia, we have to protect mother Russia from the um, international enemies that surround us, and stuff like that. So we decided to make fact-based journalism and to, you know, to not to, to refuse from the columnists' um, articles and things like this. Um, again, you know, this reality we have to we, we, which we have to manage. You know, we, it, it is a very puzzled. It is a very complicated uh, reality. It is full of um, strange things. For example. Let's take um, a law about gay propaganda. Do you know what is the law about gay propaganda? There is a law in Russia about gay propaganda, which um, if you're saying that gays are like, you know, other people, like they are normal, if you're saying this to children, you can be imprisoned. I'm not joking. There are not many, you know, examples of uh, using this law, but it is exists. So, if you're, for example, if you're a teacher, would it be would it be a gay propaganda to discuss gay topics with your uh, pupils? So you know, and a lot of such stuff we have in Russia, and it has to be explained to our readers because you know it's it's uh, the question sometimes it's uh, it's uh, the question of uh, death and life. Uh, <laughs> this is funny, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, it's really hard to to make the new project in Russia, where you live in the same day every day. You waking up, and the same bad news happening, and nothing good ha happens. You see no progress. It's really hard to start the good project. And of course, uh, you know, Russia is not the best not the best place for media, definitely. So we decided to move somewhere and to make uh, something incredible because uh, all Russian media, during all Russian history, all important Russian media were based in the capitals or in St. Petersburg uh, before 1917 or in Moscow after 1917. So it was all, one more stupid idea we started. And uh, the last uh, but also very important point is that you know we're not trying to uh, we didn't want to make a website, just another website. The idea was to create media which exists everywhere, 
we try not to divide you know the content and the distribution we are trying to make the content for every specific channel of distribution is it there uh, we have all kinds of applications you can ever imagine even from Windows Phone though it's strange um, we have uh, email subscriptions we are we using messengers uh, we even have a, an application for I think I watch and uh, so we're trying to use any you know any channel of distribution to provide the information um, what's next and it, it was um, uh, not very ordinary idea a couple of years ago though I understand that it is it is absolutely common thing for for this place, you know, for this audience, that uh, the design and development uh, departments have to be the part of the editorial team. I can't say that, you know, it, it works in 100% in, in of, of cases, of different cases, you know. But we're trying to involve uh, design and development departments into creating new, uh, <clears throat> into creating new projects. And the opposite, which, for example, we have a, uh, our internal school of coding for journalists and you know everybody went to this school in in the very beginning but only two guys left but those two guys left uh, they are making they are making making things um, they have absolutely you know different perception of, of uh, coding and uh, uh, launching new projects and you know um, we are really small we don't have a lot of money but we're trying to do something cool. We're trying to make good project, and um, you can't actually make a good project today. I think I believe uh, without the volunteers. So this is uh, this is a guy from from nowhere. Actually, he's from the city named uh, Vodkinsk. It's in it's in the middle of Russia. He's 15 years old, and his name is Seva Zhutkov, and he is one of uh, He's one of my favorite, uh, you know, volunteer developers of Medusa, because he made it a lot of, a lot of things for Medusa, and it is it was really funny when you're, you know, we we have to launch new 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 type of uh, article which is called um, chat, so you can um, you can push buttons and uh, you can get different answers, not the very you know contemporary idea, but it was a couple of years ago. And uh, the day before launching, he wrote to in, in, in Slack to uh, the editorial team, and he asked not to launch it before you know uh, 1 uh, p.m. and not after 3 p.m. because this is when he has his break in, in you know in, in school between lessons. So if anything will be crashed, you know he ha he has to be here, he has to help. Hmm. Okay, but we don't have we, we we have to remember that we are working for uh, we work in, in in that Russian speaking region, and um, media in that region have the same problems as everywhere. Uh, problems with money, with investors, with uh, new formats, and the uh, traditional media dying and new media arriving. Um, but we also have some you know some local problems. Uh, the specific of this region is that you're you're consuming every day you're consuming a lot of bad news and uh, you know you have to deal with that you have to live with that nothing good happens you know every day stupid Russian Parliament passes new stupid laws and gay propaganda is not the worst of it you know there are uh, there are tens of there are hundreds of stupid laws and Russian president, well, you know his reputation. Don't think that within Russia he is different. Um, he is more or less the same. And um, when you have that that you know that size of bad news, that that many bad news, well, actually, at at some point you just stop reading media because you don't care because you know that everything is really bad. And uh, 
it's really hard to, you know, to launch the new media project in that circumstances because you understand that you need to get people to media. You need to get them to the serious agenda. You have to talk to them about the serious problems. Anyway, uh, someday, you know, the weather is going to be changed, but uh, you will. we have to live. We have to think about the, the future. And uh, so that's why this is was very, you know, important thing. We, th we, we were thinking in the very beginning, and we, we are thinking about it every day. We're trying to remember that our readers don't want to consume news at all. Even, you know, the best articles, the best uh, uh, quality journalism, they don't want it because they just don't want to consume any media. Um, the only, you know, the only exit in these circumstances is to be, well, well, you have to try to explain why it is important, and you have to be not very serious. You can't be serious all the time. The agenda is so serious. The agenda is so not funny. So you have to create these funny um, situations yourself. So we have uh, three main uh, core products. The, uh, uh, the whole media is constructed around news agenda. So first of all, Medusa is a news, uh, news media. As I already said, we're not we trying not to cover everything. We're trying to choose the most important uh, or the most interesting. And uh, so, for example, we have only, you know, it's a big, uh, now it's a big Russian media, but we have only 50, 55 news articles, short news articles per day. But, you know, if you read Medusa, you always know that you're not going to miss anything really important. Um, Long-form journalism is uh, the second uh, important core product of uh, Medusa. Here, here are my favorite guys, and uh, Ilya Azar and Daniel Turovsky. Um, they won the award uh, Journalist of the Year in Russia in 2014 and in 2015. It's funny because you know the most influential and independent uh, journalist award in Russia. It is the award of uh, GQ magazine. Because everything is ruined. Because we don't even have influential and independent uh, um, journalist award. So it is really important to get this uh, pathetic uh, journalist of the year from the magazine GQ because they, you know that they really, you know, they decide who will get the, uh, the award themselves. So these guys are really good. The left one was uh, working in Ukraine during Euromaidan and during the Ukrainian war. And he was, I think, the most famous Russian journalist on this war. And the right one was the first Russian guy who visited the Islamic State. Um, a new format. Uh, I, I would say the third product is new formats, which you know, includes a lot of different uh, stuff we're trying to make. Uh, for example, it is an explanatory journalism. It is the thing that everybody discussing for years, for the last three years. But as I said, it is, you know, it's really, it's, it, is, it is a big thing for us to try to explain what uh, does this law mean or what does this, you know, decision of authorities mean. Uh, we're trying to give uh, to our readers a lot of practical stuff. For example, yeah, I, I understand that you can't read Russian, so I will translate. Uh, this, uh, uh, this piece is called, I was detained, what should I do? Because you know, if you're living in Russia, you're going to be detained one day, for sure. Um, And uh, we are producing a lot of uh, news, uh, short formats. Um, but of course, we love, uh, m most of all, we love news gaming. This is uh, uh, just one example. This is one of my favorite. We're trying to make very simple, very cheap, and very effective games. This one is, uh, the name of this game, the title of this game is uh, House of Cards. Uh, and it was made, uh, Exactly when um, when the last season of uh, House of Cards uh, was downloaded into internet, 
So this is, you know, you, you, you're playing with uh, Frank Underwood. And you have cards, and you see a lot of dictators on these cards, or some presidents, some, sometimes presidents, sometimes dictators, sometimes, sometimes tyrants. Um, and you have to, you know, you have to play with Frank Underwood. Uh, the bigger result on the elections you have, the stronger your card is. So, okay, we're starting from Vladimir Putin. No, Frank starts from Vladimir Putin. I don't know who's that. Somebody from Asia, some post-Soviet Republic. I think I'm gonna win. No? Did I win? No. Vladimir Putin has bigger result on the election. Do you see who's that? This is Erdogan, the, uh, the head of uh, Turkey. Okay, we, probably he has a big, uh, you know, result on the elections. Uh, what should I choose? I will choose uh, Bashar Assad. Who is stronger? Of course, Bashar Assad is stronger. Okay, now I am giving you the card with Obama. And he and Frank Underwood gives me uh, Pyotr Poroshenko, who is the head of Ukraine. And he wins. Because, you know, the result of uh, Obama and the election is miserable. So now somebody else, and then somebody else. Oh, of course, Lukashenko. Lukashenko is the strongest card, one of the strongest cards. He's the head of Belarus. Um, and so on. So I lost this game. Um, this is what Medusa is, uh, if, um, you know, talking briefly. Um, this is not my favorite slide, but, you know, colleagues asked me to show it to you, you know, that we have some results, not only games. Um, I would say, I I'd like to um, uh, say something, you know, different, not from this slide. I want to say that, you know, uh, everything we're doing, we're doing for free. We're not trying to uh, make a paywall for readers. Come visit us. Thank you.